child's ability to understand the language and word problems influences their ability to solve them. One of the best ways to help children learn math and make it more enjoyable is to demonstrate how everyday activities incorporate core math skills. On this episode of Instructional Strategies for Home, we will be discussing several math problem solving strategies that will help your child love problem solving. Making your child the star of the problem is probably one of the easiest ways to make word problems more relevant to kids. Just change the names in the problem to people your child already knows. With this one simple change, your child can easily visualize the problem. Early elementary students are very concrete thinkers. If your child is in kindergarten, first or second grade, you have the opportunity to train them to think about word problems as real life problems from the very beginning. To do this, model word problems with the actual items mentioned in the word problem. If the problem is about books, grab a stack of books and use those as manipulatives. If it's about donuts, head to Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts, or get some pretend food from the toy kitchen. And if it's about crabs, well, either get some crabs or use some blocks and counters to stand for the crabs. Using hands-on manipulatives and real objects will help your child learn not to be intimidated by word problems. As children progress through the elementary grades, it's tedious and time consuming to use counters to model problems with larger numbers. No one wants to count out 127 counters and then subtract 38 of them. Instead, it's okay to pantomime word problems to help the students snap into focus. For example, look at this problem about goggles. This is a pretty complex problem. It only requires adding the two numbers together, but the structure of the problem makes it a challenge for kids to recognize it as addition. But when you act it out, the problem becomes much easier to understand. Your child can first pantomime selling the goggles and collecting the money. Then pretend to look at the goggles still left on the table. The simple drama will help your child visualize what is happening in the problem. And once they understand the sequence of events, it's easier to understand how to go about solving the problem. Sometimes kids freeze up because the numbers in the problem simply look too big and they get scared. They're already worrying about the calculations they'll have to do, and so they don't have any brain space left over to figure out what the problem is actually about and to process the language within the problem. To solve this, it's okay to make the numbers in the problem easier. Sometimes you have to make them a lot easier. So lightly cross out the large numbers and substitute them for easier numbers that your child can work with. Then have your child think through the revised problem. This problem is a lot less overwhelming and scary for your child. Plus, you can now directly model it with counters if your child still needs them. There are three types of separate word problems. Here are three examples of separate word problems. As you read across these examples, think about the context or the verb in the problem and ask yourself what is happening in the problem and what is the unknown. It's important to teach students to solve word problems by understanding the context of the problem. Join word problems are one of the easiest word problem types to solve. Below are three types of join problems.
Teaching part-part whole relationships is critical while teaching addition and subtraction. For students to build a solid understanding of addition and subtraction, they need to understand what each one represents. Students may start solving comparison word problems as early as first grade. Then these problems get more and more challenging in fourth or fifth grade. Thank you for watching Instructional Strategies for Home Math Problem Solving. We hope that you will take this opportunity to help your child solve math problems in a fun, engaging, and meaningful way. Below are some resources that you can access through Office of Special Education, Math Tips for Parents and Guardians, as well as some websites in the area of math. Have a wonderful week.